Welcome back to Module 2, Relationships and Patterns of Organization. Only this time, you're here for Part 2. Here's a recap of what we learned in Relationships Part 1. When a good writer is composing an essay or paper, he thinks about the relationships between ideas as he writes sentences. If he is really effective, he comes up with a plan before he even starts the assignment to decide how he wants to organize his overall work. In other words, in order to make himself clear and make comprehension easy for the reader, a good writer uses transitions and patterns of organization. So far, we have learned about addition and time words. Authors use addition words to show when they are adding to previously stated ideas, like in this example right here. There are several things I have to do after work today. I have to run to the grocery store. Also, I have to remember to call the doctor. In addition, I need to stop at the bank. Addition words are used in the list pattern of organization which I just used. All I gave you was a random list of things I need to do after work. I could have listed those things in any order. Did you spot the words that I used that were clues to let you know that this was a list pattern of organization? First off right here, we have the list words in my main idea, letting you know that I'm going to give you a list of several things that I have to do after work today. The first one is right here, but I didn't use a clue word here. I did use a clue word here for my second detail, and that clue word is also. And I used a detail here, I'm sorry, a clue word for my third detail here, and that was in addition. So this is a list pattern of organization because this was really just a random list of things I need to do after work. Another type of transition that we learned about in Relationships 1 was a time transition pattern. Authors use time words to show the order of events. So if we look at this example here, I have when I leave work today, I am going to run home and grab my dog. Then I am going to take the dog to the vet for his annual checkup. After that, we will stop at the dog park. Here, I use time words to show you the sequence of how these events will occur. I have a time clue word here, when. I have a time clue word here, then. And I have another one down here, after that. I had to give you these events in this order. After all, I can't bring the dog to the vet if I don't have my dog. So I had to tell you these things in this order. I have to run home and get my dog first before I can take the dog to the vet and before we can even stop at the dog park. So these details have to be presented in time order. Now we are going to learn about three more transitions and patterns of organization. Since you already know how relationships work, you should get the hang of this pretty quickly. We are going to start with the definition and example pattern of organization, which uses illustration clue words, the compare and contrast pattern, which uses compare and contrast clue words, and then we will discuss the cause and effect pattern, which uses cause and effect clue words. Our first new relationship is the definition and example pattern of organization. Look at this passage. That English professor is known to scrutinize essays for grammatical errors. In other words, he very closely examines every mark on the paper. For instance, Eric once got a paperback on which the instructor counted the total number of commas used and the percentage used incorrectly. First, I used a word here, scrutinize. Then, I don't know if you noticed it, but I defined what the word scrutinize means. There's a little clue right here, in other words, and that's letting you know, in other words, what scrutinize means. It means to very closely examine something. So I used a term that I thought you might not be familiar with. I gave you the definition. And now I used a clue word here, for instance. For instance is a clue word that indicates that I'm going to give you an example of what the professor does to scrutinize work. So here's my definition and here's my example. Now why do we use the definition and example pattern of organization? Well. Textbook authors know when you are being exposed to new words and terms, and it is easier to make sense of definitions and remember the new words and what they mean when you have an example. So they give you the word, they define it, and then they give you examples, and voila, there you go, the definition and example of pattern of organization. Okay, 
Let's take a look at one more example, and as I read it, see if you can spot the term being defined, its definition, and any illustration clue words. Illustration clue words, that's just a fancier way of saying example clue words. So we'll look at this paragraph, see if you can spot any transition clue words that let you know I've given you some examples. People in Asian and Mediterranean cultures are known to live to ripe old ages, but what contributes to their longevity? That is, what makes it so that the majority of people in these cultures live healthy lives well into their 90s or even hundreds? To be specific, Greek people grow old free of the diseases that plague Americans, and in Asian cultures, such as Japan, it is not uncommon to see the elderly regularly engaging in physical activity. Do you spot the word that I defined in this paragraph? If you think it's longevity, you are correct. That is the word that I am defining. What does it mean when someone or something has longevity? It means that that person lives to an old age or that thing keeps working for a long time. So here, I tell you they live healthy lives well into their 90s or even their 100s. So I've defined what the term longevity means. Now what illustration words did I use to let you know I was going to give you examples? Well here, when I told you about Greek people, I used this phrase to be specific. And then down here when I discussed Asian cultures, I used the term such as Japan. So those are my illustration clue words. Now we, before we move on to another relationship, I'd like to point out that authors frequently use illustration clue words without defining a term. Now we learned at the end of Relationships 1 that authors can combine patterns and transition words and this still holds true. So again, as I keep telling you, you can't just skim passages and look for clue words. You have to think about what you are reading. So I'm going to show you another example and I want you to think about the overall pattern of organization and the transition words being used. So we're keeping in mind that authors frequently use illustration clue words without defining a term. So as I'm reading this passage to you, once again, think about the transition words that you see, the clue words that you see, and think about what the overall pattern of organization might be. A course syllabus should be read carefully since it contains a lot of important information. First off, it usually tells students what assignments to expect and how they will be graded. It may also list due dates. It has links to important sites, including the college's financial aid office and office for students with disabilities. Lastly, a syllabus may list attendance policies. Do you think you might know what the overall pattern of organization in this paragraph might be? If you carefully reviewed the Relationships 1 presentation, you might recognize this as a list pattern. Yes, this lists the important information found on a course syllabus, and these items could have been listed in any order, and I did use some addition transition words to let you know that I was introducing a new major detail. So right here, you might have noticed first off or first. Over here, you might have noticed also. And down here, you might have recognized lastly, first, also, and lastly, those were list clue words. Those let you know that the author is adding to a list of ideas. So that's the list pattern of organization. Now, over here, I use the word including. Now, including is an illustration word. And here, I used it to show that I'm giving an example of important sites a student could link to from the syllabus. See, it says here it has links to important sites, including the college's financial aid office and office for students with disabilities. So these are examples of the important sites that are being linked to. Now just because I have an illustration clue word here, that does not mean that this whole paragraph is a definition and example pattern. If you think about it, I never defined anything. So again, you can't just go through and look for clue words. Yes, you spot the clue words, but then you have to think about how they are being used. So overall, this is a list pattern, but if you were asked, what is the relationship within this sentence here? This word right here lets you know that that's an illustration pattern. Okay, let's take a look at our next relationship, which is compare and contrast. But first, we need to clear up something. Many students mistakenly believe that compare and contrast mean the same things, but they are two totally different concepts. 
I want you to remember that to compare means only to discuss how two things are the same. I want you to think about a pair of socks for a minute. You want to make sure that when you walk out of the house in the morning, you have on a matching pair of socks. You want those socks to be the same. You'd feel pretty silly if you got out in the sunlight and realized you had a black and a blue sock or a black and a brown sock. So think about your pair of socks. Pair means the same. Pair sounds like compare. So compare is when we're only discussing how two things are the same. Here are some clue words that you might want to be on the lookout for that will let you know that that's what's going on in a paragraph. Words like just like, just as, both, similar, same, and like. Those are compare clue words. See if you can spot the compare clue words that are being used in this paragraph. Like professional journalists who have mastered the art of interviewing, successful talk show hosts have the ability to draw amazing and amusing responses from their guests. People in both professions understand the importance of putting the subject at ease. And just like a journalist promises to leave some things off the record, a talk show host may promise not to air some footage. So this passage compares journalists to talk show hosts. Do you see the words that I use to show that they are similar? The words that I use to show the things that these people might have in common or how their jobs might resemble each other? The words that you should have chosen are like, let's see, both. And down here we have just like. Those are all of the words that are letting us know that we are only talking about how journalists and talk show hosts are similar, how they resemble each other, the things they have in common, how they are the same, because all we are doing here is comparing. Now, if comparison words are only used to discuss how two or more things are the same, then contrast words are only going to be used to discuss how two or more things are different. The words however, but, yet, and although, and the phrase on the other hand, are examples of contrast words, along with some pretty easy clue words such as differ, different, differs from, and in contrast. So now let's take a look at a passage and let's see if you can spot the words that let you know how the two things we are discussing are different. The Tampa Bay Rays and New York Yankees are two baseball teams that could not be more different. People like to joke around that a Yankee star will take home a multi-million dollar salary in one season while the Rays may operate the whole team on an annual budget equal to that one Yankee star's yearly earnings. The Yankees are a team with a storied past that stretches back for generations, yet many kids in the Tampa Bay area introduce their parents to the Rays. Finally, Yankee games regularly sell out with seats going for record prices. On the contrary, it is not uncommon to see the Tropicana, where the Rays play, more than half empty. So what clue words did you see here that let you know how the Yankees and Rays are different? Let's take a look. You should have found different. Over here we have the word while. Hmm. Over here we have the word yet. And down here we have the phrase on the contrary. Now let's take a minute to discuss a couple of clue words from this paragraph. You re may remember this word here while, back from when we talked about time transition words. Yes, the word while can be a time or a contrast clue word. Remember how I told you and how I keep telling you don't just skim the passage looking for clue words? Well, here is another example of why that is a bad idea. You have to think about how the word while is being used. To say that people like to joke around that a Yankee star will take home a multi-million dollar salary in one season while the Rays may operate the whole team on an annual budget equal to that Yan one Yankee star's yearly earnings, I could substitute another word there a contrast word like the word but. If I said a Yankee star will take home a multi-million dollar salary in one season but the Rays may operate the whole team on that budget, it still makes sense because that's the relationship within the sentence. It's a relationship of contrast. And remember, we're talking about how the Yankees and the Rays are different. 
Let's just look down here for one second at this sentence. The Yankees had to stop the game while a thunderstorm was passing over the Bronx. Here I also have the word while. Now if, again if we substituted another contrast word here then it wouldn't make sense because within this sentence we don't have a contrast relationship. Here the word while is functioning as a time word. It's letting you know when something happened. When did the Yankees stop playing the game? when or while a thunderstorm was passing over the Bronx. So again, you can't just go through skimming the passage looking for clue words. You have to think about how they're being used. You may have also noticed this word finally right here. What's the word finally doing hanging out in a contrast paragraph? Well, think about this. Remember in Relationships 1 that I told you that a paragraph can have more than one pattern of organization? Not only is this paragraph a contrast pattern, it's also a list pattern. In fact, it's really just a list of contrasts. So you could say that the overall pattern of organization would be contrast and list. So let's say you're taking a multiple choice um, exam or doing a multiple choice practice for this skill and your first instinct is that after reading this paragraph you think it's a list, but that's not one of your choices. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong. Just stop and think for a minute. What is this a list of? Well, this here was a list of all of the ways that the Yankees and the Rays are different. So this would be a list of contrasts. So you have two patterns of organization here. It's a list pattern and it is contrast. Okay, back to our discussion of compare and contrast words. We have talked about how they can be used separately. But now, let's see compare and contrast words used together in the same paragraph. Because yes, you can have a paragraph that's just compare, a paragraph that's just contrast, or you can have a paragraph that does both. Here, you want to look for words that let you know when two things are the same and when those two things are different. So let's take a look at this paragraph here. Cardigan corgis and Welsh Pembroke corgis share some similarities. Both are low to the ground with long bodies on stubby legs. This is because both were bred to herd cattle, and those bodies that look awkward allow the dogs to quickly roll out of the way if a cow decides to kick. The dogs also resemble each other because of the large ears that point straight up. Perhaps the most notable difference between the two is the tail. While the cardigan corgi has a tail, the Pembroke does not. One might also notice a slight contrast in size. The cardigan is the larger of the two breeds. Now this paragraph started out by comparing the two types of corgis. It started out by telling us how they were the same. It told us about their similarities. So that was one of our clue words. Here we have the clue word both. Over here we have the clue word both again. And you should have found one more right over here. The word resemble is also a comparison word. But then it switched and it went on to contrast the two breeds and it used the contrast word difference. Once again we have that word while and over here we have the word contrast. So remember if a passage is only talking about how things are the same it is only compare. If it is only discussing differences it is contrast. If it incorporates similarities and differences, then you have compare and contrast. Okay, we've reached our last relationship, and this one is cause and effect. If you read a paragraph that tells you reasons why something happened, what caused it, the results or the effects of that occurrence, then you are reading a cause and effect pattern of organization. So let's take a look at an example. I'll read this paragraph. You see if you can spot any words that let you know reasons, causes, results, or effects. Technology has led to changes in the way people communicate. Because people don't want to get caught up in a long phone conversation, most people now use text messages as a fast and easy way to send a message. Families spread out across the state, country, or even the world can easily stay in touch on a daily basis due to social media sites. People enjoy using sites like Facebook and Instagram to stay in touch since they can post photos and videos. Finally, it almost seems like something out of the future, but it is now possible to see the person you are having a conversation with. If you want that face-to-face -face feel while talking to your best friend who is in California while you are in Georgia, then simply use FaceTime or Skype. 
Now, in Relationships 1, we talked about looking at the main idea sentence for patterns of organization clues. And let's review that here with this paragraph. The main idea sentence in this paragraph is the first sentence. Technology has led to changes in the way people communicate. It tells you that technology has led to changes in the way people communicate. This phrase, led to, that is a cause and effect clue. This paragraph is going to give you a list of changes and those changes are text messages, social media sites, and seeing the person you are talking to. But it's telling you about how technology has led to these changes. So yes, it's a list pattern, but it's also cause and effect. Now, did you spot the words that let you know that this was cause and effect? Perhaps you saw this word right here, because that is a cause and effect clue word. If we keep reading, you should find, and give me a second because I need to find it too. Oh, here it is. Due to. Because why are people around the world easily able to stay in touch? Because it is due to the social media sites. So due to would be a cause and effect clue word. Um, let's see, down here we have since. Since can be a time word, but here, since means the same thing as because, so that is a cause and effect clue word. And then down here, we have what we call the if-then clause. If this happens, then this happens, so that is your other cause and effect clue. Let's try one more. Let's read another paragraph, and let's see if you can spot those cause and effect clues. Drinking a green smoothie every morning will result in dramatic positive effects on your health. Because a green smoothie is chock full of good for you foods, you can get all of your fruit servings and half of your veggie servings at breakfast. Consequently, you are starting your day off with a dose of vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and this will cause you to crave more healthy foods throughout the day. A bonus result of a daily green breakfast smoothie is a decrease in your risk of catching a cold or the flu. Therefore, adding a green smoothie to your diet is a small adjustment that leads to big positive changes. Okay, once again, we have our main idea sentence. Drinking a green smoothie every morning will result in dramatic positive effects on your health. And we have some clues that this is going to be cause and effect. Once again, it's also a list, but it is a list of effects that result from drinking a green smoothie every morning. What were the other cause and effect clue words that you should have spotted? Okay, right here we have because. The next one is consequently, which sounds very fancy, but consequently is a cause and effect clue word. Um, over here you have cause. Over here we have result. Down here we have therefore, and there was one more that you should have spotted in the last sentence, leads to. So those are your cause and effect clue words. Okay, so what have we learned about relationships? We have learned that authors use transition words to show the relationships between and within sentences. Those transition words can also indicate how a paragraph or essay is organized because of patterns of organization. <clears throat> we learned that the transition words and patterns of organization are addition words used in a list pattern, time words used in a time pattern, illustration words, which can be used anywhere but are often found in the definition and example pattern, compare and contrast words, which are used to compare or contrast or do both and cause and effect words which are used in the cause and effect pattern. We learned that authors can give clues in the main idea sentence as to what that pattern will be but once again you should still read a passage in its entirety and think about relationships as you do. For example, you might be reading a compare pattern but see an illustration tr uh, transition word. This does not necessarily mean there is also a definition and example pattern. Now, there are more relationships than the ones that we discussed here. But if you think about what transition words do, and you try to figure out what relationship they imply, you should be able to figure out the relationship. 
For instance, you might see a choice for a pattern of organization question that says statement and clarification. Well, what does it mean if I state something? It just means that I say it. What does it mean if I make a clarification? It just means that I explain or clarify my statement. So if an author makes a statement and then gives an explanation, there you go, statement and clarification. The only difficult one might be a spatial relationship. And I'll write that word out for you here. Spatial. Because if you don't know what the word spatial means, then you might have difficulty figuring out what the relationship is. Spatial just means where things are in space or where things are in relationship to one another. So if you read a passage that uses words like up, down, left, right, north, south, east, or west to organize major details, then you have a spatial pattern of organization. Um, we learned that authors can use more than one pattern of organization, so always keep that in mind. Remember, many times you're going to see something and you'll think it's a list, and you might look for that as your choice if it's a multiple choice question. If you don't see it, that doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means you need to stop and think, what is this a list of? Okay. Understanding relationships will help you make sense of a passage and can make it easier for you to take notes, which will only assist you in becoming a better note taker and therefore a better test taker. Also, you should use transition words and patterns of organization in your own writing so that you present your thoughts in an efficiently organized manner. For these reasons, I truly believe that the relationship skill may be one of the most important ones that you learn in terms of improving as a reader, as a writer, and as a critical thinker.